Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe and hold on. Dated my light sign. I noticed today that it still said let it snow because of when I did it for Christmas. And um, yeah, I'm getting real sick of this stuff. So it was time to change my sign. So now I figured that's only fitting for my room now. So yeah. So this video is a little bit of a spur of the moment video. I'm in the process of planning tons of enclosure upgrades and tons of enclosure remodelings. And I realized there's some enclosures you haven't seen yet. One of which being Tootsies. Usually when I do an introduction video for an animal, so meet my whatever, I show you their enclosures. When I did my Meet My Samboa video, I never showed you her enclosure. There's a little snippet of it, but I didn't really show it to you or talk about it. So before she goes and gets an upgrade in a little while, you know, she needs to grow a little bit more. But before I give her an upgrade at that point in time, I wanted to show you guys what we were starting with. So what she was upgrading from. So this video is actually inspired by my friend May. So shout out to May. If you guys don't know who she is, you need to check her out. Her Instagram, her YouTube, her name is Medusa. She's amazing, she is hilarious. Her little noodle babies are to die for. So I will link her YouTube and Instagram page in the description below. Go check her out, subscribe to her, follow her, tell her I said hi. So one of her last videos, she did, in her opinion, what would be the top five best beginner snakes. And in it, she mentioned how cost effective owning a Kenyan sand boa is and how her Kenyan sand boa really doesn't cost her very much. And that got me to thinking, wow, neither does mine. And then I was like, wow, I never showed you guys my Kenyan sand boa enclosure in my Meet My Kenyan sand boa video. So that's what we're gonna do today. So as you may have guessed, one of the most cost effective ways of keeping a snake is to keep them in a tub as opposed to say a nice tank or exoterra or something. Unless you somehow find a good Craigslist deal, in that case, you're lucky. I haven't had that good of luck yet. But a lot of people are keeping snakes in tubs now because it's so much cheaper for huge sizes, the size of a tank. They may not look as nice, but for some species, they are great. They're great for species that need, say, higher humidity, like rainbow boas. And a lot of people use them for ball pythons. I also use one for my Kenyan sand boa because she is so little and so young that she really doesn't need all of the space that an exoterra or a tank gives. So this was just a good way to start out. I'm able to keep my temperatures where they need to be. And I'm able to just monitor everything so much better in a tub setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you now. So you guys have seen these shelves before. They were in my apartment. You've also, if you saw my Christmas room tour, these were here. And the only animal over here is Tootsie. So this is Tootsie's tub. I can't even tell you what size it is because I really don't remember. But it's a pretty decent size. All right, so the tub. To start off, obviously I've got holes on the sides for ventilation. I did these with a soldering iron because I was too scared to crack the plastic using a drill. And I didn't have a drill and a soldering aisle, iron, wow, soldering iron was pretty inexpensive at Home Depot. So I highly recommend if you're looking to put holes in bins that you get one. I also do that for my bug bins. And you know, I got my rainbow boa bin. So yeah, 1010 would recommend. It's super fun to use too. All right, so I've got a latch on both sides. So what I like about these tubs is they're very, very secure. So she's not sneaking out the sides or anything. So these are great enclosures. I think I got this at Target, but I believe I've seen them at Walmart too. Different sizes. This is the same kind of enclosure that my rainbow bow is in, but because it's bigger, there's four latches. So I'll take the lid off. So it's pretty basic. I just have some aspen, a water dish, this leaf that fell off of another animal's plant that I threw in here because it makes it look nice. And then I just have this kind of wooden log tied in here that I also used to help hold down my thermostat wire and thermometer wire. 
because over here is the hot side. I do have a heat pad under here connected to a thermostat. So I'll see if I can find her. I believe she is going into shed. She didn't eat for me last night. There she is. So there's my little noodle baby. I'm not gonna take her on bugger because she's going into shed. And she went through kind of some stress last night. So I took her out to feed her and she didn't wanna eat. I think she's one of my snakes that will not eat when she's going into shed. But I thought I'd give it a try anyway. But that was not successful. I do remove her to eat. She is a very picky eater. So I put her in this deli cup in her enclosure and leave the room and leave it dark and quiet come back a while later and lately it's been working so I'm thinking it's just because she was in shed that it didn't work tonight or last night so hopefully better luck after she sheds but yeah so that's really all there is to it it's pretty basic the only thing I do is monitor for poops feed her and you know I check on her every day give her fresh water which I didn't do today I need to there's some aspen in there which I probably just did but yeah, that's all there really is to it. And so soon, she'll be getting an upgrade. I'm just waiting for her to grow a little bit more and get some more feedings in her. And then I'd like to move her up maybe to an actual tank. She can join all the others on my shelving unit. But for now, she's my tiny little noodle baby in her little noodle tub. But yeah, that is my Kenyan Sambo enclosure. As you can see, very cost effective, really didn't cost me anything. The tub maybe cost six or seven dollars, probably like six. The Aspen I had on hand because of Phoenix. I think I got the little wood thing at the expo I got her from for like three dollars. And I think I got the water dish for two or three dollars at PetSmart. So really, I did not buy much. And the things I did buy were very inexpensive. And she, I think, was a thirty dollar snake. So. I think to date, she's been my most inexpensive animal. Also, just a side note, this video is not me telling you guys to go out and buy a sand boa because they're not as expensive as some other animals. That is not what I'm saying. Sand boa may not be right for everybody. I don't remember. I think I may have talked about this in my Meet My Sand Boa video. Not sure. Um, I'll have to go back and watch it. You guys can watch it too while you're at it. I'll put it right here. But yeah, and I'm not saying to completely mimic my setup. That is what I do, that is what works for me. Like I said, she'll be upgraded soon. I'm looking to make more improvements. I always say do your own research, find what works best for you. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. And we'll see you next time.